Hi, Tamar. Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Uh, this week in your column, you've talked about the new pitch for bond dealers to bat on. Well, you're talking about some of the changes that have been brought by uh, brought in by RBI. Can you demystify for us what these changes are and what are the macroeconomic implications? Yeah, thanks, Ruchika. It's a little technical. Uh, Reserve Bank of India has changed the norms uh, uh, for bond buying by banks uh, to be in sync with the um, uh, global norms. Uh, it had issued a, a sort of... Uh, discussion paper before and now it's it's the final form uh, taking effect from april next year now there are multiple things let's not get into all three three important things that i want to highlight one is that bonds under the H, so called htm category held to maturity category on which bank does no a bank does not need to make mark to market losses now what is mark to market losses is essentially a bond has bought at certain price and if the if the prices goes up or goes down, accordingly, it has to make provision for, for that. So that's what the, if, if it goes down, then the, it's a loss. Now, it says that you can have your entire bond portfolio even under the HTM, which means banks will not be scared of mark to market losses and they can uh, put more banks in the, in the HTM category. What is more in, interesting is not only the government bonds, even the corporate bonds also can be under the HTM category, which means even the co for corporate bonds, there is no scope of mark to market losses, uh, even if the bond prices fall. Now, this will give a tremendous boost to the uh, corporate bond market because you know that despite the best efforts of markets regulator and banking regulators, bankers are not very forthcoming for buying corporate bonds. Instead, they will give you a loan because uh, in the bond, uh, if, they, if they invest in bonds, and keep it in the investment book, uh, they uh, suffer the risk of mark to market losses. Uh, why do they do that? They will keep it in the loan book. Now, that's all good, but the point uh, is there is a, I, I, I think there is a risk also, there is a challenge also for the RBI because once you, you have you have put everything in the mark to market uh, in, the, in the HTM box, what happens is this, you really don't care about whether the bond prices are going up or going down. But if you are not a good risk manager, the asset liability mismatch can happen. And that's what happened in the Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank put most of its money in the bond market and that bond prices slipped and it was suffering on a huge mark to market losses. And that point of time, the depositors uh, wanted to have the money, but they didn't have the money because they have to make good the losses. They didn't have the capital. And the 40 year old uh, California based bank, a very large US bank, uh, went belly up. So, RBI, of course, is much more vigilant here. We don't we, I don't think we will see this kind of thing, but there is a challenge to it. So these are the first two aspects, corporate bond and government bond, it's both good and bad. And the second, third thing I would like to say that, uh, you know, uh, which is only good, not bad. So that's the thing that uh, the banks which you can trade, now there's a cap within 90 days you have to do that. You cannot do it. You, can, you cannot do it beyond. Now, RBI said, no, there is no cap at all. You can trade at any given point of time, which means you can ban, you can keep a bond on your books for, meant for trading. Uh, I don't want to discuss all these technical terms of the basket's name, etc., etc., but meant for trading um, for 180 days, for one year, etc. So that will give a tremendous boost to the liquidity in the market. I want to talk to you about rupee. Uh, what do you think is the future of rupee now? It has been slipping. Uh, so can you share your thoughts on that? Currency, I don't know. But yes, rupee has been slipping. And if you have noticed that in the past one month, the Reserve Bank of India as uh, foreign exchange reserves has gone down by more than 14 billion. After a long time, this kind of impact happened. Now, there is a twofold, uh, uh, there is two reasons be behind that. One is this the valuation going down. So that once the valuation goes down, uh, there, there is an impact on that. And second is this Reserve Bank of India has been in the market selling dollar. Uh, so, what are the key reasons at this point of time we have we we have seen is one of the geopolitics, uh, primarily the geopolitics. We so long we have been talking about uh, Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine, and now of course Israel is there. And uh, 
and you 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 must notice that the oil price is sleeping. Oil price again crossed ninety, um, which RBI projection has been eighty five. So this combination is there is a there is a demand demand for dollar is rising, and um, some of the other emerging markets currencies are also sleeping. RBI has been holding on at a certain level, certain band that that's been doing. So the way forward is I would like to believe uh, till this geopolitical uh, geopolitical issues continue and uh, and uh, you know, if there is no let up in the rising price of oil uh, we will see reserve bank of india little more i would not call it aggressive but uh, continues to be present in the market and that will impact our uh, foreign exchange reserves but the good story is that despite the slippage uh, both in currency as as well as foreign exchange reserves our reserves are pretty good the uh, third thing that we want to talk about today tamal uh, are the hdfc results which came earlier this week uh, the net profit has risen by uh, 51% now this is the india's most valued bank can you share some of the key highlights uh, from this uh, yeah it is india's it's not only india's most valued bank it will be probably one of the top half from the half a dozen most valued banks globally probably you will see that probably that's the case uh, uh, well, fifty-one uh, percent net profit growth is not exactly correct because there are uh, because it's not comparable. There there are multiple issues you need to check in. This is the first time post merger. That's why it's very important to uh, it's very important results. So I will not I will not uh, give much importance to the net profit as such. Actually, uh, you know, on a like to like basis, net profit is up around ten percent. Uh, but the other few things we need to, I do not say concern, but we need to take note of, and they are on the expected line. One is the uh, net interest margin has slipped. You know, HDFC is net. I don't know when it, it when did it slip last because it 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 did slip uh, this quarter. That's point number one. Uh, point number two is this NPA gone up, and point number three is that the CASA ratio. That's a low cost, which HDFC, the CASA award is probably coined by HDFC in the 90s, uh, which is current and savings account, has gone down. So these are the three key things. All three are a little challenges, but they are on the expected line because of the merger. Because on the on the liability side, it has got a lot of a lot of debt, which is not not or not low cost. So obviously, that has impacted their CASA as well as name. Uh, and uh, again, the bad loans also have come from that other book. So these are the three things. So HDFC, this is all um, fallout of the HDFC merger. Uh, and uh, I would like to believe it will take time because the merger will be in the in the market term value accretive for the investors, not overnight uh, because there are challenges. And um, we will in the next few quarters also we will we will see HDFC tackling HDFC bank tackling these challenges. All right. Now that's quite a good roundup of the banking sector this week, Tamal. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, all the details, we understand RBI is now trying to match up uh, with global standards. Uh, and uh, you laid out very well what the pros and cons are of uh, all these different uh, investments, uh, 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 the investment classifications uh, that have been launched by RBI. And uh, same about the HDFC Bank's uh, results as well, uh, giving a full picture, things to watch out for amid uh, all the uh, green shoots. Uh, thank you so much, Tamal, for uh, joining us today. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration Success so high. I will achieve. I will fly high. I am the eye in SBI. I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI. I the banker to every Indian.